I'm excited because in this new version of Capture One 23, we have new features that are going to help improve our portrait editing workflow. Now, I do want to thank the people at Capture One for sponsoring another one of my videos. If you're a regular on the channel, you all know that Capture One plays an essential role in my portrait editing workflow and has been my go-to software for my raw processing. In this video, I wanna go and give you a deep dive into how the new features work from the new cull and import upgrades that's gonna help us make our selections much faster. And then we'll look at the new smart adjustment tool that automatically adjusts the exposure and white balance to match the look across images. And then we'll wrap it up and look at how we can now use layers in styles that will give us full control of our styles workflow. Let's go ahead and cover todo el pedo. The first feature that I wanna get into is the new call and import upgrades. So here's one of my recent photo shoots. And in Capture 123, you'll notice that there's some new sections now that we have a group overview, which we're gonna get into in a little bit, but basically it just kind of groups similar images. Then now you'll notice one of my favorite things that they've added is now I can filter my photographs and I can start culling already as I'm importing and I can also color tag. But more importantly, as I'm looking through these images, as I'm importing, I get zero delay as I'm browsing. So if I'm gonna hit the down arrow here, you'll see that there's no preview generation needed. It's gonna move through and streamline much faster. So what does this all mean? Is now as I'm importing, Instead of me, because this is what my old process was, was just importing all of the pictures first, waiting for Capture One to import everything, and then start calling my images with the one stars, two stars, and color tag. I can easily do it already as I'm importing. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So let me just show you here. I got this photograph here. I like it, I'm gonna put it as a one star for now. So anything that I you know kind of like, I'm gonna put as a one star, anything that I'm probably wouldn't post on Instagram, I'll leave it at, z at zero star, right? And so right away, as I am starting to already rate my pictures, one of the big benefits is that I can start filtering my ratings. So in other words, if I go over here to the one stars, I can say, okay, just show me the 13 pictures that I've liked so far. And if I wanted to, I can press control A, hit the check mark and tell Capture One, these are the only 13 pictures that I wanna import instead of importing all 700 and I don't know what, 91 pictures that I have here. I used to be wasting a lot of hard drive space. I used the Canon R5 and the Sony a7 IV. So I was importing basically everything, all this junk that I probably wasn't gonna edit and my hard drives are getting full. I have like 10 of them back here. And so now what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start rating my pictures first and then deciding do I really wanna import those pictures that I know I'm never gonna post and save extra space. But more importantly, I'm gonna go in real quick and I'm gonna rate some more pictures and I wanna show you how this group feature works. Now I've already rated about 180 pictures. I can simply sort through them and I can just look at my one stars and figure out which ones are my favorites. And of course, then I can add a three star or five star or color tag if needed. But what I wanna show you now is I can go here to the group overview section and I can enable groups. So now that I'm in the one star section, which are the photographs that I've narrowed down to be my best, now I can narrow it down even more. And this is gonna help me cull through my images even more now. So here I have a similarity slider. So basically what it's doing is that Capture One's gonna look at all my one stars and then it's gonna group the pictures that are very similar. So in this section, you'll see right here, this specific pose, it says there's 20 pictures that are very similar to this specific pose and look. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it. And now what this is gonna help me do, and this is great because if you're a high volume photographer, maybe you do weddings, you do portraits like me, this is gonna really help us really narrow down the best image, especially from these top 20 that it picked that are very similar. So I can go through these now and I'm just looking at these 20. And now I can really narrow it down. And instead of leaving it as a one star, I can say, you know what, this one I want as a four star. And this one I want as a four star and maybe this one as a four star. And so now, because I'm just looking at that specific pose, I can really narrow it down and figure out which one is gonna be the best from this section. So just by looking at those 20 pictures, 
I've been able to figure out that from this list here, I've narrowed down to eight. Now I can look at these eight and I can figure out that right here, this is probably my go-to. I'm gonna give it a five star. And now I've really narrowed it down. And what's great about this is that now when I import, so I'm gonna go ahead and import everything. So I'm gonna hold, get the one stars. I'm gonna hold control. I'm gonna get my four stars and my five stars. And I'm gonna take off the enable groups. And I'm gonna go ahead and check mark all of the pictures off to the left right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and import all of these pictures. And it's gonna bring in all of the ratings. If I color tagged anything, so let me just color tag something here. I'm gonna push plus on the keyboard, give it a green color tag, green color tag. All of this stuff still stays intact whenever I go ahead and import into Capture One. And what's great is even after I'm done importing, I can still get back to the cool features by coming up to the tools bar. And I can click this button here and I'll be directly right back to where we started. And this just helps, once again, any high volume photographers really narrow down their best selects by using the rating system, the color tags, and then of course using the new group overview by enabling those groups. This next feature is one of my favorites and it is the smart adjustments tool. So let's go ahead and take a look at this photo shoot that I did a few weeks ago. And what you'll notice is that I love the exposure that I got on the face and the white balance straight out of camera. So here, I don't need, I can't reset anything. This is the straight out of camera. I love the exposure on the face here. But as I progress through the photo shoot, you'll notice that the exposure on the face is now a little bit underexposed, right? And so how can I tell Capture One, get this exposure from this face and now apply it to maybe a series of photographs? And what's great about this smart adjustment tool is that what it does is that essentially it's basically just looking at the face and that's the key thing here is that you need a visible face and Capture One's gonna identify and figure out the exposure levels and it's gonna copy those and it's gonna automatically apply it with one simple click. So let me show you how this works. So I'm gonna select this image. This is my image that I wanna use as my reference. So the, in the Smart Adjustments tool, right here it says Set as a Reference. So when I click this, you'll see that my image that I'm referring to is now giving me a preview here. And then I have two options. I can tell Capture One, do I also wanna grab the white balance from this image and also the exposure from the face from this image. So I gotta make sure that both of those are check marked. And then when I go to this image here, look what happens when I hit apply. It's automatically gonna get the same exposure on the face and also the white balance. And the reason why this is important is that you might be thinking, well, Eli, come on, man. I could go back to this image here and let's say that I used an exposure adjustment layer. Maybe I bring it up, maybe 0.5 or one stop on the exposure. And I can just copy and paste these layers over, but it's gonna give me inconsistent results because each photograph that I have might not need that one exposure. So I'm gonna have to go to those images and tweak the slider, move it down to maybe 0.75 or 0.5 or 0.1.25. And that's just giving me extra work. With this feature, Capture One is doing all of the work for me by simply looking at my reference image, getting that exposure where it needs to be, and then applying it perfectly to all these other images. So I'm gonna go ahead and select more images here. So I'm gonna select three more images. Let's have them all grouped here. I still have my set reference section here, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. And then right off the bat, I have all of this series already perfectly exposure, uh, perfectly exposed, I should say, and the white balance. Now, this is gonna work great for wedding photographers and of course, portrait photographers like myself, and it's gonna speed up things a lot faster with one simple click. Now, as a bonus, you guys can also save this as a style. So if there's a sp specific exposure level that you always like on the face and you wanted that, you wanna apply this consistently to all your images, you can save this as a style. And now what you'll notice is that right here, it says smart adjustments. And once again, if you feel like the white balance is gonna be a little bit tricky, I might encourage you to take that off and at least get the exposure levels where you always like it on the face. So I have that, and then of course you can apply all these other settings, but let's just say that you want um, just the smart exposure. And then here it's gonna tell you what image it's referring to, which in this case, it's this image here. I can hit save. 
And then let's say, for example, I can name this. I'm going to put YouTube example and then Eli, and then I can hit save. And what's great about this is that I can come back to my importer, right? Let's say I'm doing a new session and I go over here to import and let's look at the session I had earlier, right? And so knowing that I want that exposure level on the face to always be like that, let's say I'm importing a new session. Let me just, for example's sake, I'm just going to use four stars here, the seven pictures I had. And whenever I import, I can go to my adjustments and I can tell Capture One, when you're importing these pictures, go ahead and import that custom style, that YouTube example, Eli. And it's going to get all of those images exposed on the face properly. And so I already right off the bat have a great starting point. And then I can add a simple color grade and bada bing, bada boom. This next feature is a fantastic addition. And now what you can do is add layers into your styles. So previously, I want to show you what the issue was before with the old method of styles. Not that it was wrong, but let's take a look. So let's say I have some presets here, right? And let's say that I apply one of these styles and let's go with, eh, for example, let's go with this one, the any color six. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click this one. And actually, you know what? I'm actually gonna right click and apply it to a new layer. And so when I go to adjustments, one of the issues is, is that with this specific style, it has exposure adjustments and it has color grades all built into one specific layer. So if I decide to decrease this effect with the opacity, which is, which is great, don't get me wrong, the problem is, is that it's decreasing both of them together. And so it's decreasing maybe some of the contrast, the curves and exposure that I have, but also the color grade. What if I really love the color grade, but I just wanna decrease the exposure and contrast, maybe the tonal adjustments or vice versa. Maybe I wanna adjust the tonal adjustments or the color grade, I'm sorry. And then I wanna adjust the exposure level levels separately with opacity. Well, with this previous update, I wasn't able to do that. It was all kind of sectioned into one layer. And now I have to just adjust the opacity and then give myself extra work by now going over here and tweaking the color grade separately. So what I wanna show you that you can do now is I'm gonna quickly just show you how to make a style real quick, but show you the importance of how to use this new feature in Capture 123. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new field adjustment layer. And the way my workflow is, is I usually separate things when I'm editing. So I might go, this is my base layer, and then I want to be able to adjust my color grade separately. So I'm gonna go color uh, grading. So I'm gonna to go to my base layer first, and I'm just gonna quickly just change some settings, like maybe let's maybe adjust the exposure a little bit. And once again, this is just an example, just follow me here, and maybe bring up a little bit of the contrast, bring up the blacks, shadows, maybe a little bit of the brightness. I'll scroll down, we'll bring up a little bit of the clarity, the structure, yada, yada, yada. So I'm just gonna leave it like that, once again, just an example. And then I'll go to my color grading. I have it separated set, uh, purposely for a reason, so when I go into my color balance and maybe I go to shadows and let's say that I want it to be a little bit more uh, purple and in my highlights, I want it to be a little bit more teal and maybe my midtones to be more in the purples. OK, so I've already made this is let's take a look at this. I'm going to hit Y on the keyboard. This is my before and then after. And let's say that I want to make this into a style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my styles and presets section here. And I'm gonna hit these little dots right here. And I'm gonna put save as custom style. And so now what you'll notice is that here, I can save it as layers. So here I'm telling it, I want to have this style saved, the adjustments I made on my base layer, which is my exposure levels and my color grade. I want you to separate both of them. So when I apply this to a specific image, now I can go and adjust the opacity and basically have a better workflow and a much faster workflow because I'm separating them separately with opacity. I think I said separately too many times there, but we'll just continue here. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And I'm gonna go ahead and name this. I'm gonna put here uh, example YT for YouTube and hit save. All right, so let me go to this image over here. And now let me show you what this new workflow is gonna look like. I already had saved the preset earlier, so I'm gonna go here to Bella Style Preset, and when I click this, now when I go into my layers, what you'll notice is automatically, 
I have a base layer and a color grading layer separate. So I can go to the base layer now and I can say, you know what, this is my tonality adjustments. I can now decrease this and get it perfect because as we know with styles, they're not perfect. On an image to image basis, it's gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna need to make some tweaks. And so this gives me a much better workflow to just be able to adjust the opacity. So I might say on this image, the base layer, I'm gonna put it at 55 and the color grading I decided to do on this image, I feel like 100% is too much and I'll bring it down to maybe something reasonable like 65. And right then and there, if I hit Y on the keyboard, this is the before and then the after. So now with this new feature, stay tuned because I will be releasing some new Capture One presets pretty soon. So be on the lookout for that. If you guys enjoyed this video, I have other Capture One tutorials where I edit a photograph from beginning to end just in Capture One, as well as how to use all of the other Capture One tools to maximize your portrait editing workflow. And don't forget, I do have a discount code, 20% off for new annual subscriptions to Capture One. So I do want to thank, once again, Capture One for sponsoring this video. You guys have a beautiful day, and I will see you guys on the next one.